Jim, our next question is one that a lot of people have sent in, and it's a quote from Booker T. I don't know if you've seen this, but I'll read it to you. I'm not exactly sure where he said this, and I'm trying to see if anyone in any of these emails... Well, Booker T had something to say, and he said it somewhere. <laughs> I've got a song I want to sing. Here's a quote from Booker T about AEW talent and what they're doing in their matches. AEW, they are one bad accident away from something really, really being done about what's going on in that company and people looking at it from a different perspective. They really are one bad accident away. I don't know if you saw one of my former students, Ember Moon. She kicked this girl so hard. There's no way you could brace yourself. Oh, Jesus Christ. So he's taking credit for training old uh, Athena. I had no idea how much I need her. Yeah. A good late Who song, but let's go back to the quote here from <laughs> Booker T. There's no way you could brace yourself for, you know, what I saw. Okay, is it cool? Are those guys, the fans, loving it? Yeah, yeah, they're loving it. But it's a reason why I'm still walking around today. He's talking like Bray Wyatt. I'm not sure what he's saying. Actually. Yeah, well, we're getting we're getting the idea, but it's you know a transcript well, conversation. There's a reason why I'm still in the gym training. It's because I knew how to go out and perform. It was a certain way on house shows. It was a certain way on overseas tours. It was a certain way on a Monday night or a Thursday night. It was a certain way on a pay per view. All right, that's a good rhyme. Yeah, and neither one of them was the same. When I see these guys going out and performing the way they are today, just throwing caution to the wind and not giving a damn about the person that they're working with, it's beyond me. Oh, well, yes. And, and he's talking about what we've said here a bunch of times. You, your spot show match was different than your house show match was different than your TV match was different than your pay-per-view match. And all of them depended on who your opponent was and the 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 risk reward ratio is this going to if i take a risk here to, tonight and do something is this going to further my career or this angle is going to lead to me making a little more money because there's going to be more people in the house or what you had to evaluate these things on a regular basis every night every match multiple times in the matches sometimes in the in the territory days and in the days of even the early days of guaranteed contracts and up until the last 15 years or so, the top guys had a, you know, a, a sense of, of proportion of what they were doing and where they were doing it and how important it might be. And yes, if you're in the main event at WrestleMania, you're going to go balls to the wall. But, you know, you see these clips of these kids and they are kids, and they ain't going to get much older this way, doing this shit in barns and rec centers and the county fair. What? And you're like, what the fuck? Complain about the hair pulling at the county fair. Um, so that's, that's one thing he's talking about. And also, yes, you, you not only have to be in control of yourself, you have to be in control of your opponent. And that's what it, we, everybody still, I don't think, got the picture. We were talking about Ember Moon or Athena or whoever the fuck she is these days. Not being in proper control of people when she's putting them places or landing on top of them or being reckless with them. And I actually had a lot of people, well, Cornette, you said that about her because you're racist, but you used to watch Dr. Death and the Steiner brothers beat people up all that. No, no, I didn't. I never watched the Steiners or the or Dr. Death be needlessly reckless with people, unless it was a fucking personal situation in a match, but needlessly reckless with people because they were strong enough to put those people where they needed to be. So yes, they were throwing them all around, and if you talk about Steiners and the Nasty Boys, yes, that's all kind of reckless shit that they agreed to beforehand, and everybody was on the same goddamn level. And nobody would, but again, you're talking about these kids that are on YouTube matches or these girls that are in fucking, you know, dark matches or whatever the fuck, just actively not only being reckless, but egregiously reckless with the dives and the furniture that doesn't work with you and 
or the indie shows with the broken glass and the fucking et cetera, et cetera. It's just insane and it's reckless and it's going to shorten careers. And to his bigger point, they're one bad accident away. What he means is what's going to happen if or when somebody is paralyzed for the rest of their life or worse on TBS's air on live television. Hey, that Julia Hart incident, we almost saw it. Oh. We almost saw it right there. Because yeah. you want to talk about something that was unnecessary, there's one that was completely unnecessary. And again, within an inch, and she wouldn't be here. So what happens then? Then not only the television network is thinking, okay, and yes, it can happen in football, but I think we've all come to the realization, even as wrestling fans, that not only is football more popular than wrestling is these days, but also they'll give it more slack because it's a shoot. And we've told all the TV networks, like we told everybody else, this is all phony bullshit. So why did you allow these people in this performance, Tony, to break their necks and die on my live television show, on my network? Fuck you. That's what the boss of Warner Brothers Media conglomerate might say. And then who who gets killed or who gets paralyzed or who gets put in an iron lung? Their family sues, don't they? They sue somebody. Yeah, the cons. Well, there you go. And then, well, they'll probably also sue, since Turner Broadcasting, technically, or the parent company, is is paying for that programming. They've got a financial interest. They got a lot of money. They'll get sued too. So yeah, that's one bad accident from spoiling the whole bunch girl. Well, Jim, if there were one bad accident, you'd be dead. But if there was a almost really bad accident, you may still be living and you may need a lawyer and you may need to sue. If there was, you know, what a perfect transition from that question, ladies and gentlemen, if there was a bad accident, either good, bad, or indifferent, and you do need to sue, I think by now all thought, all question over a potential attorney to represent you in court has been answered and answered by this man right here. Steven P. News. If you need to sue. An outlaw mud show or two. Still to the rest. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he will indeed sue your posterior, your hiney. Your caboose, he'll sue it, and he will drain it dry if you, or I'm using the royal you here, in some way infringe upon the rights and privileges of his client. Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. The magic number is the man that you need to call if you have been harmed, injured, terminated without cause or proper cause. If you have been trod upon or your rights and privileges as an American citizen frivolously bandied about and backhanded, if you have been dicked by the dangle dong of destiny and you need somebody to fight for your rights, Stephen P. New is the man to do it. He has had states of emergency declared in West Virginia. We've talked about that over the last several weeks. He has saved the opioid-addicted babies. He has brought the pharmaceutical companies to their knees. He's filing cases in state after state in multiple jurisdictions because he's spreading out to cover the world like Sherwin-Williams. He is a man who will take care of your interests and your rights and, most importantly, get you compensated for infringements upon same. And he loves the little animals. He contributes to the arts. And he's also a parent, a father, a husband, a son, and oftentimes a son of a bitch if you get on the wrong side of him. That's Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, the consigliere of the cult of Cornette, 
standing by on that phone, ready to take your call and help you. Just like the guy that used to sit by the phone on the old home furniture commercials. You remember that way? You didn't watch TV in the 70s in Louisville, did you, Brian? Not much, no. I'm here alone, waiting by the phone, listening for one thing. Ring a ling, so make a bow to call me now and tell me how I can help you. <laughs> <laughs>